Outlast short video game review. You are Miles Upshore, a freelance journalist who is out to discover the horrible truth behind the Mount Massive Asylum involving former Nazis and bizarre experiments. And you find it to have many patients and possibly a few doctors still. And some of them are just as scared as you are. Some of them are completely harmless in other ways. Some of the violent ones are, you know, you, you see are behind bars or the like. But you will be hunted by the homicidal of the patients, including Chris Walker, who's, you know, this big guy and he's got like claws for fingernails and just, yeah, real beast. And yeah, this has both stealth elements and parkour, so you can sometimes hide from enemies, sometimes you're chased by them and you're, you know, vaulting and making, you know, limited jumps and, you know, climbing ladders, moving along ledges either by your fingertips or carefully walking along them. The first-person perspective parkour works here a lot better than in Mirror's Edge and is hardly ever frustrating. And the parkour also remains realistic to what a normal human being in decent shape would be able to do. And while, while the puzzles are very simple and the just in general this doesn't offer a lot of complex situations, it works for a game that really, at a drop, at the drop of a hat, you will have to just run and run, and for that, the linear levels and very simple puzzles work well. I found that rather than hiding a lot, it was more useful to gradually move away from enemies and you know, so far away that they couldn't quite tell I was there and so slowly that I didn't make noise or accidentally move into light and, you know, be discovered. And I found that the, the trial and error, you know, situations in this that others have criticized, I personally found that once you kind of figure out the basic idea of, you know, the, the game uses the same basic situations, you know, it, it's variations on a theme almost, and, you know, not like repetitive, but once you realize what you're supposed to do in a certain situation, you just keep having to do that in that certain situation, you just, you know, recognize those situations. The game is extremely gory, and while not always gory, whenever gory, yeah, really excessively so, and some won't find it particularly scary, scary, although no one can deny that it is intense, especially in the parkour chases. And this does use jump scares, but it does also have suspense, such as when, you know, gradually moving while you know that there's someone in the area or, you know, hiding from them. The graphics are pretty good and the controls fairly intuitive. There's hardly anything you can interact with in this, just, you know, opening and closing doors, picking up batteries for the IR mode of the, the camera. The camera making a very unique element, making it, making this survival horror more of, you know, giving it a flair of found footage horror, similar to Rec and, you know, Paranormal Activity series and it works really well and the IR is both the only way you can illuminate an area that isn't already lit and it's fairly short distance because it's not a flashlight that you just aim at something and also does not give your position away because it doesn't give off any light and it does of course also make good use of the really creepy effect of eyes glowing when you see someone through the, you know, the IR. And it's a game that has several difficulty settings, but few achievements, and it took me four hours to complete. I know some could do it in two hours, and 
it's not particularly replayable in spite of it being a lot of fun to play. If you like this review and want more detailed one, the link is in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.